a weather balloon, but there is a lot of evidence or theory that it wasn't actually aliens. It was like a spy craft from, you know, the Soviet Union and, and the Cold War and all that stuff kind of uh, ramping up and them trying to spy on us and we shot it down and all this other nonsense, which, which would explain why the military reacted so quickly to this quote unquote weather balloon crashing and, and you know, sectioning it off. So there is that too. Like we want- I wouldn't even be sad if that was what it ended up being. No, you know? no, like, all, yeah. Like that would be equally interesting to me. And I mean, I, it would not be as like groundbreaking, I guess, as if they were like, this is the footage right. of the aliens intestines. <laughs> but you know, I don't know. Like I would be very like, wow about that. And I would believe it too. But to oh, take yeah. the opposite side of that, which I think is fascinating is that most cold war related incidents like the U2 spy plane, stuff like that, have been outed and reported. So if it was something from the Cold War, especially a Russian something, why wouldn't we as a government been like, oh yeah, no, that was just some crazy like Russian well, spy that, plane. That's, that's what's so fascinating about the whole Roswell Area 51 situation is that it's still so fucking muddy. Like even looking and reading through the book uh, Crash of Coronoa, like the, the government documents that were leaked and, and everything that's, you know, actually in the book that you can see, um, like it's so muddy. Like the government's feeding us this, but they're in private saying that, and it's just, we don't know, and we may never know for sure what happened there. Um, and, and, you know, talking about what Alex said too, that's the other problem with doing like alien research nowadays is that the internet exists. So anybody with access to it can quote unquote do their research and quote unquote publish their findings. So that's why you have all these fucking crazy web pages that have books and books and books of just their explanation as to what the aliens are here for here and stuff and they're like they they consider themselves scientists and i'm giving the biggest air quotes i can and researchers and you're just trying trying to parse what's real what's not real and what could possibly be just misinformation being spread on purpose to keep us you know in the dark it's fucking yeah, but hard it's but it's interesting there's something undeniable about it like yes 100 percent. i don't know what it is like that's so alluring to me about the idea that like there's aliens. I don't know if it's even like the imagination of like, wow, like other races in space. So much as it is like, the government is like hiding me. Like even the X Files. Like, is it is it just because I like the X Files? Like, am I just like <laughs> conflating my childhood together? Yeah, and maybe there's part of it that that's doing it. Uh, that's 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 the reason. Um, I will say, uh, as a side note, don't. Just so you know, I live in a legal state. Don't imbibe and research aliens at like 1 a.m. Because I swear, I'm just, I constantly was like, there's something outside my window. There's something outside my window. And I was just waiting for aliens to be tapping on my window to be like, we're here to abduct you. I was freaking out. <laughs> <I> was <laughs> that freaking feeling, out. that feeling right there is like the defining feeling of like 1960s and 70s, like cult right. leader ass Los Angeles. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. That, All right. that stuff is so scary. Oh it, yeah, it's wild. Okay. So let's start with the idea that we are being visited and why, uh, you know, in general terms, people believe, and I do, and by people, I mean a lot of people, because there's some, some hardline similarities between everybody's beliefs. While a bunch of people may believe one thing or, and others believe another, in the middle, there's always, there's always commonalities between them, and those commonalities is what we're going to talk about here. So, the first thing I'm going to say is Earth has been being visited by aliens, according to many, many people, for thousands of years at this point. Um, all the way back to where you see paintings uh, of UFOs. And again, this is what Jesse was saying, like, this is people, like, putting our own interpretation on this art um, and, and the like. And uh, as far back as, I think, where is it? Um, like, 74 BC or 214 BC is where we're starting to see, like, the first quote-unquote uh, sightings uh, of aliens in the sky. Um, Livy from, I guess, 214 BC uh, in Rome, Livy records a number of portents in the winter of this year, including Navium Specium de Calo Adufilicisi. I butchered it. Uh, which basically said, what? Tran it <laughs> translates to an appearance of ships had shone forth from the sky. Uh, just recorded that Fuck. she had soar, they had seen ships in the sky during a winter of the year that they recorded it, which was 214 BC. Okay, uh, but, but in, like, again, I just, before we jump into this, I have to, as a historian, of course, stress some things that 
need to be said. This is it. Also, this is probably good. Jesse, you taught history. Yes. So this, you're not coming at this from just uh, an amateurish kind of thing. So the the unfortunate part of saying aliens have been around for a long time or that mm. it's it, there are many known instances in the past is, one, it's our modern interpretation of what was being said. Of course. Two, everyone seems to forget that cultural change is not a thing that happens quickly or in an instant or it happened at a moment and then another moment and then another moment. Cultural change and the idea of growing and trying to figure out who you are as, as a human being and as a civilization happens slowly over time and at a very slow, constant pace. It always happens. So human beings, even though right now we're like, we are very innovative and we come up with all sorts of fun things and we're drastically moving at the speed of light with technology and microchips and all that stuff. Humanity, as a species, has been changing and growing since our first existence, right? And right. the thing people forget, and I, I feel like this is the egotistic nature of who we are, we forget that our past ancestors were intelligent and capable and innovative and just because we think we are better than them doesn't mean they didn't also feel the same way about the people who came before them, right? And so right. everyone over a long period of time grows and creates. And so, you know, those of us alive today right now are the product of this long history of innovation and change. And we, just like them, looked back at the people before them and were like, hmm, I wonder how those, uh, like, less than people, right? The people who couldn't have possibly built the pyramids or couldn't have possibly have done this or they didn't understand this or what it had to have been aliens that helped them with this because they were like, like we looked down on them just like they looked down on the people before them. And so when you look at civilizations, again, humanity can, when we put our mind to anything, we can do it. So all these things about pyramids, well, a pyramid is a, is a geometric shape that is, the reason why it's everywhere around the world is because it's something that is mathematically sound. So right, if you're yeah. smart, you can figure this stuff out. And, that, and it's not like aliens said build pure. So one of the things I think is fascinating is when you look at all these aspects of the past, another thing to remember is they had archeologists, not called archeologists, but 2000 years ago, there were still people discovering things in the ground that they were like, hmm, I wonder what this could be. And that would be part of their story and backstory as well. And they'd be like, oh, this could be a thing, right? So we as a civilization, as, as a species, have been doing the same thing we're doing right now forever. And so when you see stuff chiseled on walls, we are like, oh, well, they must have seen it. But we don't know that. We don't know that what they saw is what they saw. It's them telling a story and writing it down. And so we put a lot of weight into like, well, they're ancient, so they must be more knowledgeable about certain things and less knowledgeable about other things. So they didn't know what it was, but it's clearly like that kind of stuff. And so going back to, was it Livy? Whoever was saying, yeah. you know, we saw ships. Remember in his mind, a ship literally is like a little tiny boat. Yeah. yeah so if they saw true. little tiny boats in the sky, what is like aliens aren't showing up in boats in the sky. If he saw a saucer and like a air quotes flying saucer, if he saw that, he would not describe it as a boat. Right? It would be something else. And so yeah. the questions then that are raised from that I think are fascinating. But a reminder that we throughout time have constantly dealt with the what is, what is this? How does this work? Let me, you know, conspiracy theory this. Like even our ancient ancestors came up with wacky theories and then wrote them down. Yeah, so, I mean, here's... Just to fast forward time a little bit, like there is actually, a, a, a more, in my opinion, more interesting and a little bit more, I don't want to say credible, but it happened in 1561 over Nuremberg. Uh, it was called the Celestial Phenomenon of Nuremberg, and it was written down in their newspaper and actually exists. Uh, and it says, Around dawn on April 14th in 1561, residents of Nuremberg say they saw what they described as an aerial battle, followed by the appearance of a large black triangular object and then a large crash outside of the city. According to witnesses, there were hundreds the of... There were hundreds of spheres, cylinders, and other odd-shaped objects that moved erratically overhead in the skies. 
Um, and you can actually see what they drew, like they printed in their newspaper. Just look up 1561 Celestial Phenomenon. Oh, I'm Nuremberg. doing it right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do it up. 1561 Nuremberg? Yeah, April 14th, 1561 Nuremberg. Uh, the text on the broadsheet, I'll read out the text that they wrote in their, like, newspapers. In the morning of April 14th, 1561, at daybreak, between 4 and 5 a.m., a dreadful apparition occurred on the sun. And then this was seen in Nuremberg in the city before the gates and in the country by many men and women. At first, there appeared in the middle of the sun two blood-red semicircular arcs. Uh, which would remind me of like maybe like a solar flare or something um, just like the moon in its last quarter and in the sun above and below on both sides the color was blood there stood a round ball of partly dull partly black fer uh, ferrous color likewise there stood on both sides and as a torus about the sun such blood red ones and other balls in large number about three in a line and four in a square some also alone but in that between is fucking crazy it's cool. In between these globes, there were visible a few blood red crosses, between which there were blood red strips, becoming thicker to the rear and in the front, malleable like the rods of reed grass, which were intermingled among uh, among them two big rods, one on the right, the other on the left. And within the small and big rods, there were three, also four and more globes. And then there's a, a bunch more to read. So, about, but so here's a fascinating thing about this, and I love God bless historians. This is why I studied history. So yes. this is actually a very well-known incident. Um, but the big question here is that the reason why it's well-known is because of this story. There's mm -hmm. no evidence other than this, uh, this, this broadsheet, as it's called, is that this is the only evidence. Like, there's no other written documentation of this. So this is the mm -hmm. only thing. And so saying hundreds or thousands of people seeing it, it's only what this thing says happened. And then another fascinating thing that I, I love is this. At the time, of course, there's the printing press, right? So this like right. exists. Just like today, and this is why history is awesome. Just like today, there were newspapers and then there were things called broadsheets. Broadsheets were pamphlets contained a lot of stories and allegories and folklore. So it's kind of See, like- I didn't know that, that's cool. Yeah, so this, this was in one of those broadsheets. So the potential that, like, beca again, because it's old, the potential for people to be like, oh, well, it must be real because it's old and it exists and it was printed. And back then they didn't make stuff up. Like, yeah, no, they had basic comic, like comic books or Reader's Digest or things like that. Mm -hmm. That's what this was in. See, that's cool. And how do you, but then how do you explain the Black Hawk helicopter that appears in the temple of Seti the First at Abydos? <laughs> I don't explain that. You got me. You know, you got me. <laughs> See that that's see that and that's such an important piece of information uh, for people to know is like what is a broadsheet and what's the difference and um, first of all that's su I'm super glad you knew that because in my again I'm looking for highlights and things to just bring up as talking points you know I'm not going super in depth with these particular things but the fact that you knew that that's fucking cool and now that that adds or takes away rather a lot of credibility to this particular reporting because it's more or less coming out in what I would assume is like a tabloid in the 1500s. But that's exactly where we see the same stuff now. Right, exactly. And as much and as much as that's you know a rational-minded person's way of looking at this and being like, well, this isn't super cre credible evidence, right? Which it isn't, obviously. Like it's also the very same place that you that you know, as as a society, you know, we've decided like that's a crazy thing, you know, and so the only place you ever see those crazy things like Bat Boy or whatever the fuck else is in these like sort of like looked down upon magazines but i also i do feel like though like if this something this massive happened where tons of people saw a sky battle it would be more than just a what would be a you know a pamphlet or something that told stories back then well sure um, i don't know it's again it's interesting and it's cool um but i i much like you said at the beginning uh take it with a grain of salt and but yeah. here's, here's, here's the here's the fascinating thing over time and this is, this is what I'm not, this is why I think, man, I love stuff like this. Over time, the term broadsheet eventually became a large format newspaper, right? And less mm. sensationalist than tabloids. So it, it, it's, it's, I can't, I can't, I, I love this stuff. It's one of those things where I don't know exactly. It, it, it well, could there's no, be yeah, there's one no thing, it could be another thing. Right, it, right, it, right. 
1566, over Basel, there is a very similar story that happened only two years later um, that that was in Switzerland. And uh, they have, it's in there, what is the, uh, what they call a pan, they actually just call it a pamphlet from the thing I'm reading, um, of these circular objects in the sky going to war. Um, so, but the idea is that the idea of circular objects in the sky and having like weird, like being ships or something has gone back. That, yeah, that, oh, that's the point. Yeah. Okay. Uh, to... Let me interrupt really quick. I figured okay. out. I did my research. Okay. A tabloid, at least during the time. And I guess you could say today, a tabloid. It was a small minded, uh, basic, like. Uh, entertainment editorial with for the people gossip and trivia and half truths right broadsheets were the exact same thing except they used bigger words they were more intellectual and they described things and offered social commentary so they're roughly the same thing except one was a more one high more like a zine yeah yeah absolutely so it's it, it broadsheet is <laughs> still not newspaper but it offers something that is like it seems more real because it's like well we're talking about a scientific thing Right. Okay. That makes sense. Yeah. The the point being, uh, there's been reports going back thousands and thousands of years. Whether they're credible or not is, you know, will always be up for debate. Um, but you know, it's, you don't know, off the top of your head. The uh, so the next thing is okay. Why have the aliens been visiting for so long? Well, the first thing you need to know is that there's two different types of aliens: the mean ones and the nice ones. You see, the hostile aliens, the mean ones, are part of what is known amongst most people, at least I can tell, the greater community out in space. You see, there's a war happening out in space, and has been for thousands of years. And it's not a physical conquest, it's a battle of will, and it's a psychic war. Freedom and free will are not allowed, and very few species have fought and earned the ability to have a free and insular planet and community. It is difficult to have a free people in this galaxy, where most are not free and are ruled over. They are suppressed to maintain order, provide security and stability after going through long eras of war, competition, and conflict. These larger networks have been established after those long wars have happened. In this region of space, war is suppressed and outright conquest is no longer allowed. If a nation wishes to gain advantage and influence in another world, such as in an emerging world like Earth, they must use more subtle means and employ other agents to carry out such an intervention. We face a non-human universe where freedom is rare, a universe that will seem foreign and even hostile to our presence should we escape the bounds of our very solar system so there's a psychic war happening and uh, aliens are mean and they want us and the reason they want earth uh is for two is twofold as far as i can tell um one for us our, our human humanity and it, their ability to have free will and their spirituality and the fact that religion apparently still exists on our planet is all very important to them and Earth itself is very resource rich, and we're destroying it, and they're trying to stop us from that because the Earth, the planet is too useful. Okay, so it's almost like, how do I like how do I describe this? Like, the whole planet is like trying to be conquered, but like s while still following some sort of like prime directive ass. Yes. <laughs> yes. Okay. Well, because uh, the the reason this is this is the way it is, it's, it's basically a, an accepted quote unquote prime directive, is that aliens are technically not allowed to interfere with us unless we openly, as a as a species, openly invite them to do so. Otherwise, you know, their laws dictate they cannot openly interfere with us. It's like uh, literally the prime prime directive. Yes, more or less. But they're still breaking it. They're just trying to break it quietly uh, to the point where, you know, their government or whatever doesn't come down on them. So that's the hostile aliens. And we'll go over what, what species kind of belong in the hostile race. Um, and is then like a basic, is there like a, is there like a singular source for this? <laughs> no. <laughs> like, and then, and then, are you, I mean, are you, are you operating off like a specific version of this story? No, I'm operating off of multiple versions that all kind of say the same thing. And this, Got it. this is one of those things where, again, somehow humanity is very important to this story, which makes it seem like, like, this BS is the to me. 
this is the aspect that I also, like, smell BS with. And we're going to get to it when we get to the races specifically. Um, because a lot of the races that are dominant, quote unquote, one specific race I'm thinking of, feels very white supremacy. I, I think I think most of these things are <laughs> like 